Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about a newly discovered system with three unusual exoplanets that got scientists really excited. This system doesn't even have a good name yet, actually it does have a really complex name, but we're going to refer to it as Toy270. And this particular system has three exciting exoplanets. Let's talk about this and welcome to What The Math. So in a nutshell, this is what the system looks like. You have three planets with very unusual properties that don't really represent anything that we have here in the solar system. And what's more interesting about this system is that it has two planets that are extremely rare in the galaxy. Because generally speaking, from all of the over 4,000 exoplanets we've discovered, most of them can be classified as one of these. So either you have hot Jupiters, very, very large planets close to the star. We don't really have these in the solar system. Or you have cold gas giants. That's something that we have a lot of. You have these ocean worlds and ice giants. Then you have rocky planets, lava worlds. And basically that's kind of it. But then there is an unusual gap in exoplanetary formation that's right here that represents the so-called sub-Neptune object. That's an object in uh, mass and also in size anywhere between Earth and an actual Neptune. So basically, if we were to look at our own solar system, it would be anywhere between these two objects. So right here, there is a kind of a gap of planetary existence. In other words, right here, there's a very unusual gap of planets. We don't really know um, if it's just uncommon for them to exist or if most planets eventually turn into these smaller objects like Earth and Mars um, or larger objects like Neptune and Uranus or if it's just something that we haven't really been able to find. But of course it just so happens that we just discovered a star system that has these sub neptune planets and there's even two of them with the third planet in the system being what's known as a super earth. So these two planets um, are literally sub-Neptunes, they're both in the same system, they both seem to have the parameters we usually associate with extremely rare planets, and for the most part uh, we don't really know how it's possible for them to exist, because they seem to have been there for a very long time. And although we understand uh, for the most part what most planets will have on the inside, what kind of composition they'll have uh, depending on the mass and their size, in this case we have no idea what they're made out of or what's inside or outside of those planets. We don't know their atmospheric composition or if they're basically made of ices, and that's of course things like methane, ethane, and water, or if they're just really really large rocky massive objects similar to Earth. And today, a lot of scientists even refer to these types of planets as the so-called missing link. So luckily for us, we just discovered the star system where we can finally study these objects. And I'm sure in the next few months, there will be a lot of really interesting studies coming out that will analyze the system in more detail. Now you can actually already check out the system in Space Engine because it's been added there. And this system currently doesn't have a name. Uh, like I mentioned, it does have a very challenging name to pronounce. But in Space Engine, it can be found under the object known as TOI270. TOI stands for TESS Object of Interest, which technically should have made it TESOI. But anyway, so uh, TESS is of course the telescope that's responsible for discovering a lot of exoplanets already, and it's going to be the primary investigator, and it's going to discover a lot more of these exoplanets in the next few years. Uh, the way that it discovers them is by literally looking at the dips in star brightness every single time a planet passes in front of the star. And so by looking at these dips in brightness, we can usually tell the size of the planet and then use further analysis to discover its mass as well. And just to help you visualize all of this, I decided to recreate this in Universe Sandbox with the actual name displayed right here. Um, that's the real name of the star system and the three exoplanets in orbit around the star just to kind of see what happens to these planets and what sort of parameters they have and of course what temperature we get here. So for the closest planet, that's the super Earth known as Toy 27A, we expect this to have an average temperature of about 250 degrees Celsius and very likely to be similar to Venus in a lot of um, parameters. It might have atmosphere, but if it does, 
its temperature will probably be over 400 degrees Celsius or even higher. So this planet is kind of interesting, but not super interesting. Mostly because we've seen a lot of super Earths and a lot of really hot super Earths as well. But the other two objects are very unique and we don't know what they look like. This is just a simulation, so we're not sure if this is what it might look like. But this is the object known as Toy 270b. And as you can see here, it's represented as a kind of a sub-Neptune. Here's what Earth might look like for comparison. And at the same time, it's also a very hot object. It's about 200 degrees Celsius on the surface or basically close to about 400 degrees Fahrenheit. So this is one of the first objects that's very interesting here. And although I guess the previous object can be classified as a hot sub-Neptune, here we have a warm sub-Neptune. And this one is um, roughly around 60 to 70 degrees Celsius, which is not so far from planet Earth. So that's about 150 degrees Fahrenheit, which in a sense is manageable. It's kind of equivalent to a typical sauna. But at the same time, um, being a sub-Neptune, we don't know if it's a gas giant or basically a gas planet or if it's a rocky object. So here, if it's a gas planet, it might look like this, very similar to the previous object. But if it's a rocky object with a very thick atmosphere, then it might resemble a very massive and very large water world resembling something like this, with the radius um, roughly around two radii of Earth. So even though we don't really know exactly what's happening here and what they look like, we know that they're really interesting, really large planets with the average size about two to two and a half uh, size of Earth. But we don't know their mass. We don't know their composition just yet. So further studies will need to be done to try to find out what's really happening here. One thing that we do know that actually is kind of surprising is that all three planets here have a very interesting uh, pattern. They basically orbit in what's known as resonance. So uh, for every five orbits of the closest planet, the second closest planet does three orbits. And then for um, every two orbits of the second closest planet, the farthest planet does one orbit. And what these resonances usually tell us is that it's a very stable system that's most likely been like this for millions and billions of years. In other words, these sub-Neptunes have existed here for a very long time, and unlike previous assumptions that maybe sub-Neptunes change with time, disappear, or just no longer exist in most systems, this star system clearly shows us that it's not the case, that sub-Neptunes can exist for a very long time and can become permanent planets. Which of course raises the question, why is it that they don't seem to exist in many other star systems? Or are we just looking for them in the wrong place? But most importantly, because we have this resonance now, by using this ratio and by looking at, the, at these objects and how they orbit around the star once again, we'll be able to very precisely calculate their mass and then discover their density and of course, possibly composition. And by uh, directly looking at these stars once again, with telescopes like James Webb telescope that's coming out in a few years, and then looking at this right here, the edge of the actual planet, we'll be able to very thoroughly study their atmosphere and find out what they're actually made out of. And thus find out what's inside of them, what's outside of them, and what they might be hiding. Are these water worlds or are these unusual gas giants or possibly some other strange objects we didn't really expect to find. And because this star system is only about 73 light years away from us, we'll be able to see a very clear picture in the next few years once we do a follow-up study. But until then, that's all I wanted to show you in this video. Hopefully now you know a little bit more about what we've discovered and why it's kind of important. Anyway, if you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and come back tomorrow to learn something you may have not known before. And maybe even consider supporting this channel on Patreon because it does help me quite a lot. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.